Today uh, we are here. We're delighted to uh, present one of the fine physicians from the Loveless uh, Medical Group uh, from time to time. And today uh, with us today from the uh, pediatric group at Loveless is uh, Dr. Felipe Sangalini. Dr. Z, as uh, the kids call him, and yes, it, it's nice to meet you, Dr. Nice thank, to meet you. Thank you for thank coming. Thank you for in. inviting me. You bet. So, Amber. Well, I have a question for Dr. Z. Um, how often should children see a pediatrician? Well, uh, we usually start then seeing them at newborn. Right. That is the first visit. And then we have like a schedule of visits, two weeks, one month, two months, four months, six months. The younger they are, the visits are more frequent, mm -hmm. and we go all the way through age 18. That's the cutoff for the pediatric population. Very good. Um, we hear a lot in the news. You know, we're in the media here. We hear in the, the, the media about childhood obesity, and I'm wondering if you're seeing a lot of that uh, in your practice here, and what you're doing about that, and how you're advising parents. Uh, I see it every day. I mean, if we look at the statistics on the last 30 years, pediatric obesity has doubled in children and quadrupled in adolescents. And unfortunately, it's related to other diseases that are the consequence of right. obesity. I mean, diabetes, heart problems, high blood pressure, you know, anxiety, mm. self-esteem issues. What's making you know, these kids heavy? Uh, well, uh, the way that we eat, yeah. mostly. I would say that 60% of the cases are related to that. I mean, these days, if we don't get a super-sized meal, we feel that it's not a good deal, right. you know? And the amount that, uh, of the portions are too big, and the way that yeah. we eat, too. The other thing also that uh, contribute to the obesity epidemic is uh, technology. Children tend to spend too much time in front of a computer, in front of a TV uh -huh. set, instead of being playing outside or running or exercising, you know, and that also contributes to your weight gain. Mm. And so much of it is due to the, the, par the parental, um, you know, influences too, you know. I mean, 95% are, it's a family problem. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. not only a pediatric, right. it's not only the child. Yeah. That's why it's so important to, if we can, I do all possible to change habits. You know, I don't, sure. believe, I don't believe in diets. I mean, multiple studies have shown that diets do not work. You lose certain amount of weight, but you gain it back. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The more important thing is to change the way that you eat, you change the habits. And of the whole family, it cannot be only of the child. It has to be the whole family because, like I said, 95% of the parents also have a weight issue that needs to be addressed. Well, it, it, it's hard. you got to counsel both the parents and the children, and you have to do it in, in different ways to uh, you, you, get you the have, result you want. You have to be very tactful, you know, because yes. it can be a very sensitive issue. And you find out that many, many times they deny it. I mean, really? it's obvious that they are overweight and yes. they ask you, really? Yeah, really, <laughs> really, I mean, huh. there is a weight issue here and something yeah. that as a family you need to address. And at Lovelace we have uh, a team, we have nutritionists that help us managing these patients, you know, and we follow them periodically, following the weight, the way that they are right. exercising and they are doing all other things besides e eating. Yeah. Let's talk about vaccinations, and there's also controversy out there about whether or not the vaccines are something that are effective or uh, they cause other things. I, I kind of know where you probably stand on this, and I support children getting vaccinated, but there's some people out there that don't believe in it because they think it causes autism or whatever. Um, give, me, give me your professional opinion on that. I. I am a big, big, big advocate of vaccinations. I think that if there's something good that you can do for your children, vaccinate them. I yes. mean, all the diseases that they protect you against can be very serious and they can yeah, even uh, lethal for mm -hmm. a child, for an adult, you know. And the issue about autism that you mentioned uh, is based on a 
very poor done paper uh -huh. by Dr. Whitefield, you know, that uh, unfortunately has created a lot of insecurity and in the parents and misinformation. Yeah. But uh, I tell you, I have seen most of all of the diseases that I vaccinate my children on a daily basis and they're not good. Mm. I have seen children dying from those diseases and uh, it's not easy to tell a parent about that. There's some outbreaks now of diseases, I, I forget what they are, but w there seem more cases of what, measles or, uh, uh, you know, you would know better than I. The more, uh, the more frequent outbreaks that we have seen in the last five years has been measles, like you mentioned, yeah. whooping cough in uh -huh. California. Yes, that's it. You know, and right. Haemophilus influenza type B in the Minnesota, Wisconsin region. You know, and all those diseases can be prevented. In specifically the outbreak that happened in California in 2010, uh -huh. if you look at the statistic, they were all in counties, the cases were all in counties where the rate of vaccination has lowered. Yeah, you know, that so, should tell you something. You know, and when you see a child with whooping cough, you really, you cannot oh. do a lot to stop the cough oh. for four to six weeks can be devastating for a, for a family. The same with measles, you feel terrible with the disease. And hemophilus type uh, meningitis, actually three absolutely normal children died in the Minnesota, uh -huh. Minneapolis region three years ago. And I would have a problem with my child dying of a disease that could have been prevented. Yeah, I, I Can would. you imagine the parents, the uh. guilt that they might have? You know, knowing they, they, they're trying to make the best decision that they can, and then, then their children has something like whooping cough, like you said, or smallpox, or some kind of horrible, you know, something exactly. totally I mean, preventable. And talking about bad decision, the best decision that you can make is to vaccinate them. Mm -hmm. yeah. You are making for them a big favor, you know, you are securing. Yeah. I mean, we are pediatricians, we are always focused on prevention and how to keep sure. our children, our families healthy. And, Vaccination is a cornerstone with that uh, objective. So Dr. Z, we're gearing up for school, back to school. I know it's already time to I think know. about that. It's the hey, she's of the a mom, summer. She's, uh, One more month. <laughs> she's ready. <laughs> I'm ready for him to go back to school, but I know I wanted to ask you, should we bring him in um, before school for a checkup or what do you recommend? I, I would. Yeah. I would because in that way we have time. Okay. We have time to do it instead of doing in a rush, you know. Right. I need to tell you that probably uh, 50, 60% of my parents wait until the last minute. I think that it's much better to uh, do it with time. It gives you an opportunity to not only do the, the sports physical or the physical for school, mm -hmm. you review other aspects also. Like we were telling how they are doing nutrition, how is the weight, right. are they up on the vaccinations? I mean, most of these children are healthy. The only time that we see them during the year is for the school or the sports physical. Yes. So we use that instance to not only do that, to review other aspects of their care, mm -hmm. you know? And if we have time, it's much easier than doing it on the last minute. So uh, call Loveless at 823-1010 and set up that appointment today because uh, the Get time it done is now while it's yeah. easy. Or uh, go online to lovelessmedicalgroup.com and, and get that back to school physical done. And, as soon uh, as possible. Yeah, as soon as possible. While we're talking about school and sports, if I, if I can ask you your opinion about uh, the, the sports like soccer and football and things that involve concussion or head trauma of some kind, are you seeing more cases of that as kids get more competitive in these sports? And I, I'd like to know, you know how you advise parents on, uh, on these physical sports that involve physical contact. Well, uh, I am, we are seeing more. Yeah, more concussions you know, or symptoms of and, that. But at the same time, there is more knowledge about what right. to do when right. you face a child with a concussion. I, I would recommend that on a, any game, if possible, they should be a physician or a health professional mm -hmm. on attendance yeah. who knows what to do when this happens. Yeah. You know? If the child is uh, always should be evaluated no matter how severe, I mean, the more severe, the more that he or she needs to be evaluated. Yeah. But um, I will recommend them that if there is any doubt on, about a hit, about a hit right. 
I will keep the child out of the game. Yeah, mm -hmm. I know that some idea. coaches can be very pushy in this yeah. sense, but uh, here we have to think on the long-term yeah. health They're of young the kids. child or adolescent. Mm -hmm. So get those uh, physicals scheduled. Uh, you can see Dr. Z and his whole group over there at Loveless uh, Medical Group. What a pleasure to meet you. Definitely. Pleasure to meet you too. Uh, thank you, thank for, you for coming me. on our TV show today. You did a great job. Thank you, sir. Thank and I you. love your Winnie the Pooh tie, Dr. Z. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Can we get a shot of that Winnie the Pooh tie? That Please. is really something. My patients love it. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Philippe uh, Zangalini with the Loveless Medical Group. Dr. Zangalini is a pediatrician with Loveless. Thanks for joining us today. We're going to continue uh, the healthcare discussion. Marlene Baca, Vice President of Marketing for CDIS New Mexico, will be with us here in just a moment on The Morning Group.